The 1987 St. Paul Pioneer Press series, AIDS in the Heartland, is a story that has had a shelf life for almost 30 years. The story depicts a gay couple in the Midwest during, their 80, during the 80s and their relationship and eventual death from AIDS. Pulitzer Prize winning future journalist Jackie Bonashinsky is with us to talk about that story and other experiences throughout her time in the field. Thanks for coming on the show today, Jackie. Thanks, Avery. So can you kind of tell me what made you start your, or what started your interest in journalism? Sure. Well, I'm from a really small town in northern Wisconsin. I uh, grew up in the 50s and sort of a sheltered, you know, little um, environment, old, old, very old world, Polish community. And um, it was before Title IX and girls weren't didn't have access to a lot of the things that I otherwise would have been interested in, and mm -hmm. I wasn't interested <laughs> in being a nurse or marrying the local farmer, um, although it was really <laughs> cute. Um, but um, we had a, my high school puts out the, uh, it still does, it puts out the legal village newspaper, and mm -hmm. so I started working on the newspaper in high school, has some affinity to it, and I realized it was a way for me to have a less traditional career to see the world, to uh, kind of have an excuse to learn something every day and to get nosy about other people's <laughs> lives. <laughs> So it, then you were a journal. You were a journalist in your high school town. Um, so what is your current position right now? What do you do? I'm teaching now. Um, I'm teaching at the University of Missouri School of Journalism, and then I have a faculty appointment at the Pointer Institute in Florida, which is a school for professional journalists. Okay. And then I work with journalists um, as a coach and editor and teacher around the world. I kind of go where people are trying to figure out how to do better journalism. A lot of work in the developing world and the, you know, in, in the old Soviet bloc countries, China, places like that. Now, you've won a Pulitzer Prize for yeah. a story called AIDS in the Heartland. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the story and then also kind of the biggest thing that you learned while you were mm. doing the story? Because I imagine there's a lot of lessons behind yeah, it. Yeah, boy, that's, that's a good question. Um, the story was, it came out of the fact that I was covering a beat we called Women and Minority Affairs, mm -hmm. and I included at the time gays because they were a politically and socially, um, they were a political and social minority. Mm -hmm. And it just happened that when I was doing that, the HIV AIDS virus sort of you know, presented itself and became the crisis it was. And so we decided we really wanted to do that story right. And one of the stories we conceived was a diagnosis to death story to give, try to give readers um, more perspective on what it was like to be someone living and dying with AIDS at a time when it was probably the biggest stigma um, and the biggest, the biggest excuse for okay discrimination in the country at sensitive the time. Sensitive topic, for yeah, sure. Yeah, very, very, very much so. So um, how did you approach it when it was that sensitive? You get to know people and you trust them and you you, you're you very honest with them about what it is you want to do. So when we mm -hmm. finally found the right people, uh, Dick Hansen and Bert Henningsen, we were just very honest about what we wanted to do and why and what it would mean to them, mm -hmm. uh, both pro and con and the fact that it would give them a voice and give this issue that they were very um, obviously very invested in mm -hmm. uh, a voice and then you're just incredibly honest with people and you give them time and you put things in context and you ask them every question you can possibly think of and then you make respectful decisions about what story needs to be told to serve readers. Mm -hmm. Now being a professor like you are now, um, and I assume that you talk to students a lot about your story ideas because a lot of them are very creative. I know I've looked some of them up online and whatnot. Um, so how do you come up with those? Curiosity. You just keep yourself <laughs> open to the world all the time and wonder about it and pay attention not to what you think and how you're reacting to but what you'd love to know and to what other people want to know. Mm -hmm. So you're just constantly kind of walking around and, and wondering about things. I call it living your life in the form of a question. <laughs> So what is your very favorite story you've ever written then and why? Oh, I don't know if I have a favorite. <laughs> it changes. I'm very fond of a piece I did once about a World War II veteran and his son who was a, war, who was a Vietnam veteran and mm -hmm. they had very, very similar experiences in the war. They were both long-range reconnaissance patrols in the, in the jungles of, mm -hmm. of Asia. But when they came back from their respective wars, they came back to a very different country and they became very estranged and had not talked to each other for years and years and years. And I ended up interviewing both separately and doing sort of a parallel of how similar their experiences were and how differently it turned out for both of them. And they ended up talking to each other again. And the story, never won, back together. The story never won any <laughs> awards, but it meant a lot to me because these two men yeah. were willing to share something and then to look past where they were stuck and say, hmm, maybe we ought to reconsider this. That's awesome. So what are some of the, there's been a lot of changes with technology clearly. Do you think a lot of those have affected the journalism field? Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, I think some of them are great. Um, mm -hmm. I think back and if I were doing AIDS in the Heartland today, it would be great to have um, these guys' voices for you to be able to listen to the voice and the timber of a person as he's dying over the course of several months. That would be phenomenal. Um, 
a lot of the technology is better tools. You can, you can do better storytelling. It gives you so much more richness. Yeah. Right now, one of the downsides of the technology is it's turning us into speed demons who don't have time to stop and think and um, invest time in the field because it's all about speed. And so that's creating some issues, I think, with accuracy. We're creating an echo chamber where you just keep passing stuff along. I think we'll get through that, um, but we're not there yet. So you don't really get to take the time to get to know people, I suppose. It's a lot tricky. of a lot of the journalists I know still in the field complain about that. That they're just they're just constantly having to post and to curate and to aggregate as opposed to doing original reporting. And the world needs original reporting more than ever. So my last question for you is, what kind of appeal to you, appeals to you about journalism and the field itself? Um, I think there's a real value to doing what we call the first draft of history and having people whose job it is to do nothing but find and tell the story honestly mm -hmm. and as independently as possible as opposed to having an agenda beyond finding and telling the story. I think that you can't, you cannot eradicate how important that is. You can't get rid of that because it serves, it serves literally as our first draft of history. All right, fabulous. Thanks for being on the show today, Jackie.